water extraction. Hmm. Nah, I don't really care about the water extraction. Uh, if we go in here, we're not really going to be able to carry much stuff out. Uh, we're over our weight limit. Um, don't hear anything. Damn it, all they want to show me is these containment rooms. Scrap metal. Debating dumping the jug of ammonia, given how much I've got now. None of this weighs much. I don't think I'm ever going to get used out of these teleporters that I keep packing around. I've got three of them, I think, in the trunk of the car already. Sort by weight. MBR vest is the most, followed by that. <laughs> ammo that I don't think I'll ever find anything that can fire it. Um, dump the scout rifle. Pretty sure I've already got one. Not likely to ever use it. Just get me below my weight immediately and we'll keep looking around. A lot of stuff down here. Drugs in these rooms. Metal tongs. No, don't need metal tongs. Need a swage and die set. Don't need metal tongs. Purifier! Can't believe I'm getting more purifier out of these boxes than anything else. I'll take it though. The more I get, the more fun we can have when we uh, take our gallon jug of mutagen to bed. And yes, I know how that sounds. Alright, came from the north, can't go east, can't go south. Off to the west. Damn it! Skitterbot got in the way before I could get the door closed. Alright. Step out of the way. Move the skitter bot. Close the door. <laughs> There's a door down that direction. But I'm not desperate yet. Work our way back around.
Um, crap, did I forget to mark this one? I think I've been in there and I forgot to mark that one. That's fine. Alright, um, well... Actually, I think... Out of that way, wasn't there a room... Uh, oops, go that way. Yeah, we'll go to this one instead. Before I do though, I should probably head up and unload. Um, carrying too much stuff, so we're likely to find more things to pick up if we go down a level. And our speed is really, really sucking. We're getting warmer and warmer. Irradiated inflammation. Maybe the radiation's causing a problem, but uh, we've got a lot of speed loss due to all these combinations, so we need to go get that taken care of. So, up we go. Up we go. All right, and all of a sudden the temperature's okay again, so I'm wondering if for some reason that lower level is getting really, really warm. Take the rucksack off now that we've got some space to work with temporarily. Um, the addition of the Kevlar vest has still got us pushed up pretty far, but...
between the two that gives us almost bullet resistance level of uh, chest protection. It's just the head protection that we're really dicey on and there's just no good way of really bumping that up lately with the changes they've made. Can't stack that up so if you get shot in the face you just get shot in the face and you die. Kinda sucks. Alright, um, I'm gonna wait here for a short bit, make sure my temperature and everything else gets regulated back to where it should be. Alright, now something's actually hurting. So let's see, let's try again here. Um, oh yeah, I brought the Geiger counter so I could check myself here. Uh, radiation 3, that's almost zero. So, don't need the Geiger counter. So it's not radiation. Try the antibiotics now. There we go. So just had to wait a while apparently. So now we got that taken care of. Irradiated will fall off. Speed's back up to where it should be. Pain will be gone here real soon. Take an aspirin. That'll take care of that. There we go. Speed 110. Just the way I like it. And 51 movement speed while walking. That's great. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I'll pretty much do that fairly often. Um, back down we go. I think we got everything redone here. Got the rucksack. I guess technically I don't need the gas mask. I don't remember ever having a problem down there, but I'm loath to go without it. Just a few more marker cards. As far down as we are, I don't think we'll need it, but just in case. So far, the mapping system's working fairly well. Helped out a bit by some convenient uh, ladder positions. Oh, it put us right down into one of the um, containment area rooms. Alright, now we're how date? Is this seven? One, two, three, four, five, six. Yep. Floor seven. Child, zombie brute. Not worried about any of that. Ooh, a remote controller CBM. Mmm. Does that let me take over turrets? Or is it you have or do you have to have the Hack Pro control laptop to do turrets? I've never had a remote controller CBM. Or is this just where you can uh, put like explosives on the little radio control car and then remotely drive the car over to blow them up? Which I could also use for turrets. Hmm. And I would just need lots of grenades, which I still don't think I can make those. I guess I can make grenades. Hmm. Well, what could possibly go wrong doing brain surgery? Self-brain surgery. <laughs> Definitely grab it. I'm not 100% sure just what 
uses I can put it to. If it counts as a control laptop type of thing, or if it's just a remote control. The only remote control device I can think of is when you've got wireless controls in your vehicle or uh, little remote control cars that you can drive around. I think you can attach bombs to them um, or grenades and stuff. All right, uh, this would be the way out. Well, let's give it a try. Hard to tell sometimes if the floors are getting smaller, just because it could just be that the map is cut off and you have to find a different stair. You have to go up a level, across to a different downstairs, and then down to find the other side of the map that you couldn't get to. So it can be a little tough sometimes. Alright, so this is the corridor here. Seven levels deep, though. Man hack and a broken cyborg. Uh-oh. Here we go, bottom floor. There's the science ID card. There could be something really nasty in here. Alright, we finally hit the bottom. Um, Skitterbot, man hack, cyborg. So far, nothing I'm worried about. Migo, also not worried about. Hunting horror. A little more interesting. <laughs> oh, they're in containment. Migo's in containment. Hunting horror's in containment. There might be something there as well I can't quite see yet. Alright. Crack. Can't read the computer screen. Wow, this is about the easiest uh, room I've ever seen at the bottom of the lab to grab the science ID card if you were doing the lab escape start. Wouldn't have been too tough to get down here. Other than the fact of the one room that I had that I used the uh, stairs. I zapped through the wall. But uh, other than that, pretty basic. I think I'm, I think that's it. Hmm. Well, yeah, I guess the shotgun could be a little bit of a problem <laughs> for a new character with a lab start. So there are stairs up here I could take instead of phasing through the wall back to my other stairs. Um, but I'm not seeing any other, there's no other, no other way to go in here other than where the uh, turret is. No other doors out of this room. Let's see where this goes. Well, I think we might be done. Unless I can find another stairs down. So there's those two. If I can find another stairs down, that means there's another area. Oh, right there. No, wait. Now I'm confused. This is where I went down? Yep, that's where I went down. So what... Uh, 
Ha. Ah. No. If I go get a rope, I could go down this. Trying to think positioning wise, though. Go down here. I think that might put me in the room with the uh, with the turret. Hmm. I don't think I can afford to try to test this one. Um, I think it might be time to leave. Alright, let's do one final review of this floor real quick, just to see if there's any other ladders down. Not near that section. Been through there. That one I just came up, so I know about that. Can't go that way or that way. There's not one in here. That's the room with the turrets. I think we're done. Alright, I know I went up the wrong there. I gotta go locate the stairs that are part of my chain. I'll leave the cash cards. I don't need them. Alright, we did have on this first floor, I remember there was at least one or two of the barracks type places uh, that we pa bypassed, so I'm going to do a run around the outside edge. Go in here. Internal storage. Apparently not. Arms alloy planing. Time dilation. Time dilation. Thank God we came this direction. Oh yeah, <laughs> assuming we can get that thing successfully installed, we can enter the Matrix. wonder if I could take on the Shoggoth with time dilation. Hmm, I probably could. I just have to bring the uh, launcher down, all my grenades, my acid bombs, my fire setting stuff, <laughs> activate the time dilation, and just saturation bomb the holy hell out of him while it's running, and uh, see if I can kill him, because time won't progress for him, so he won't get his regeneration ticks, and I'll just be able to load on a shite load of damage. I bet you that would kill him. I'm not sure exactly how... Uh, the time dilation burns your entire power supply. I'm not sure if the length of the dilation effect is based on how much power you put into it, or if it's just a set number. Um, if it's the amount of power you put into it, especially after my next round of upgrades, when I've got like 5,000 power available, I could probably keep the time dilation running for quite a while. 
And I bet I could beat him to death before he'd get a regeneration tick. That's something I really need to answer. I'm gonna actually gonna write that question down. That's a mechanics question that's pretty critical. Time dilation. Duration based on power? Question mark. I'll have to double check that and uh, see what it is because that would be pretty freaking awesome. So yeah, if you haven't seen one of these before, Time dilation CBM. At the cost of all stored bionic power, you may increase your body speed and reactions dramatically, essentially freezing time. You are still delicate, however, and violent or rapid movements may damage you due to friction. So, by that, I'm assuming my hand-to-hand -hand attacking, I don't know how much damage I would take from that. That I would also have to test out somewhere safe. Um, but, I've already tested it on uh, Shocker Brute on my other playthrough. Uh, with a rifle, had absolutely no problem. I activated the time dilation, stepped up just two spaces away from him, aimed at his face, and unloaded bursts and killed him with no problem. So, yeah, sure, if anybody can find the information for certain on a wiki or on uh, wherever, let me know. My question is, is the uh, time dilation effect just a set period of time regardless of the amount of power you dump into it? Or is it... Uh, more power equals longer duration. Would be good to know. Alright, so what's in these things? Internal storage. And empty. But, we wandered into a room we hadn't seen before. Oh, man, well, we've been this part. Oh, here we go. Here's one of those rooms. Oh, there is something inside. So this is dangerous. First level. It could still be something that could shoot me in the face, though. We're going to try it. Couple soldiers. No problem. No problem. I kind of figured that'd be the case. RM88 battle rifle. That's the RivTech rifle. Yep, RivTech battle rifle. Fall up, file, uh, firing the. Uh, 8x40 caseless, which I think we picked some up of, so we'll go ahead and grab that. That's one of the best rifles, because um, it fires the flechette rounds, and it's got a 10-shot burst mode for ridiculous amounts of damage, So and armor piercing, so we'll definitely take that. So, glad we came this way. And it is a full-on armory. Catch back up with chat here. Uh, the sheer drop, if I went outside and I picked up one of my long ropes, I could come back to that spot and I could rappel down via the long rope. Um, otherwise, you take a bunch of damage when you drop down, and there could be bad stuff down there, and there's a, some different possibilities, but just having a long rope will get you down there safely. Um, I'm just too nervous at that depth level to try something like that, so <laughs> I'm not willing to give it a try. The amount of power consumed determining the duration of the bionics effect, one unit of power for one moving point, and the activation cost of 50. Alright. Yeah, once I get my other power generation installed, I'll be upwards of 3,000? No, I'm at 2,000 now. I think I'll be close to 5,000 power. Cool. Yeah, I think if I kick that thing on, I might be able to sprint in and uh, kill a tank drone. <laughs> 
It'll be interesting to find out. That's the kind of thing I was hoping to find, is uh, that kind of CBM, high-end CBM. All right, not likely to get anything I care about in these, but we'll look just in case. For anybody new to these labs, you can get in through these doors. I'm using the probability travel CBM that lets me tunnel through walls um, for the cost of some power, but uh, you can get through those doors with either acetylene torches or you can smash through the walls with pickaxes and jackhammers. Just got to risk a uh, cave in, dropping some rubble on your head and possibly destroying things that it might fall on. Um, so there's other ways of getting through or into here. And or if you have the high computer skill, you can try to hack the computers to let you in as well. So what do we got? 8 by 40 millimeter caseless for my battle rifle that I'll never use. <laughs> 8 by 40 millimeter. What the hell? It's all over the place. No more 8 by 40. Don't care. Don't care. <laughs> Brass knuckles. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. Somehow I don't think the brass knuckles are as good as my steel knuckles. Bash six moves per attack seventy. Oh, I've damaged my steel knuckles, but it's still bash seven, probably eight or nine when it's full strength and uh, reinforced. So we'll stick with my steel knuckles. Yep, more 8x40. For some reason they seeded the room with a bunch of it. Not as good as finding one of those big drum magazines with like 100 or 200 rounds, but uh, good enough. Oh, really? Let me in the control room from there, huh? <clears throat> Alright, power's low. Turn the interchange back on, turn on safe mode, let some time pass, get my power back. Let's take a hit of whiskey. That also helps. Turn that back off again. We're finally tired. <laughs> We've just about fully explored a complete standard lab, and now we just hit the tired state. I uh, can't go that way. Don't want to deal with uh, turret. Just rolling around the exterior of the uh, level, looking for those barracks that I passed up previously. I don't think I did any of the ones in the first level. Can't go that way. I mean, again, for anybody new to the labs, when I say I can't go that way, it's because I see the lit up room. Um, that indicates that there's a turret inside that has its own light source, so I know automatically not to go that way. And this is a little easier for me, not just because of my advanced character and all the mutations that we've got, but I've got a specific mutation, uh, full night vision, uh, so I can see quite a ways without any kind of light. And uh, that's helping me out quite a bit. Normally you have to have a flashlight or something on in this place, and you have to constantly turn it off so that you can check to see if the room you're about to move into is lit up or not. Was it just that one barracks on this level? I thought there was one more, but I could be misremembering. 
getting about to the end of the east-west. There we go. Here was one more. Grenadier! Uh-oh. <laughs> Zombie Grenadier I gotta be careful of. This guy can do me some damage. Um, but it's not a room. Actually, it is one of the, uh, the rooms I want. Um, let's turn on, right, turn that off, turn on the cloak, turn on the repair nanobots, switch to run mode, run! Turn off the cloak. Ooh. More sound. Somebody hiding in the bathroom? Another Grenadier! God damn it, I hate it when they do that. <laughs> Alright. Nanobots off. Cloak back on. Run mode again. Now run the other way. <laughs> well, this is a little more exciting. Cloak off again. What kind of smoke is this? Just a hazy cloud? Let's wear the gas mask just in case. How much ventilation down here? All right, what you got for me? Tear gas hack, military ID card, cash card. Nothing else. Butcher him. Fortunately, the standard grenadiers don't have CBMs. The elite grenadiers do. Standard grenadiers are a lot less dangerous than the elite grenadiers, so I wasn't super worried about that fight. Flashbang, don't care about the rest. Another RivTech pistol. I'm just going to grab the ammo out of that one, though. Alright, take off the gas mask again. And my stamina back. Turn metabolic back on, safe mode on, let some time pass. Oh, I thirst just turned into very thirsty. Need about twice the fluids of the average human. So is that an upgrade or a downgrade? I'm not sure which direction that just went. <laughs> I don't know which one's worse. High thirst or very thirsty. Probably that was an upgrade in the bad direction. So if so, that would be my... F I don't know. If somebody wants to look it up and tell me, fine. Uh, I'm not sure which direction that just went. I had high thirst. It went to very thirsty. I'm fuzzy on whether that was an upgrade or a downgrade. And that would be from my genetic chaos trait here, randomly mutating me. Alright, so we're full and slaked. One last door to go through. Hmm. 
Looks like some pretty fun stuff in here. I don't need that. RM216 SPIW? A flechette submachine gun. Well, that sounds entertaining. No ammo in it currently. Ten shot, five shot, or single shot. Fires five by fifty millimeter. Ick. Light carbine, five by fifty millimeter armor piercing flechette cartridges. Huh. All right, we'll grab it. More frag grenades. That's the same lead works rifle. Don't care. Sure. Ah, I guess. Another RivTech assault rifle. Sure. Another RivTech cannon or hand cannon. And yeah, I know I'm overweight. Okay, let's tunnel our way back out of here. I think we are done with the lab. I'm not going to go looking for more of those barracks. Mostly it's more gun stuff that I probably won't end up ever using. So let's just find our way out of here. Yeah, I know I'm overweight. All right, this was a dead end. Alright, where are you at? Ladder out of here. Apparently I'm picking the exact wrong directions to go to find my ladder out. I think I went through that one. Alright, let's drop some stuff out here. Ooh, maybe not. <laughs> wow, it would be a shame to get my face shot off right before I uh, leave this lab. Bio-operator. We can handle a bio-operator. He got a few more hits in than usual, but I think most of it was from shocks. I don't think he was actually hitting me for much. Yeah, I was zapping myself. Alright, for this guy, I am going to whip out the surgical razors so we can maximize our chances to uh, 
get his high-end CBMs. Come on, give me a good one. Another power storage Mark II, and again we failed on the second one. Bastard. Uh, and I don't care about his other items. Infrared goggles. We'll just take the batteries. <laughs> more infrared goggles. More batteries. Nobody hiding in the bathroom this time. Alright, another room full of stuffs. Hmm. Uh, the Barrett. Can't remember, have I found a Barrett on this guy yet? This thing's hella heavy. We'll come back to think about you. Tracer rounds. PRMP2 Arbiter, a launcher, six rounds of bomblets, bomblet launcher. Ooh, you can fire two at once. Design, oops. Designed to grant versatility to small squad operations, the PRMP2 Arbiter is a burst-capable single-handed launcher that accepts up to two different rounds at once to accommodate today's changing battlefield. While more versatile than a full launcher, it suffers from increased reload times. Stop moving on me. And a in rather intense recoil. Integrated mod, underbarrel bumlet thrower. Hmm. As it holds and throws up the three bumlets. So is it three bumlets from two different types? Yeah, six rounds of bumlet. So you can load it with two different types of ammo. Interesting. Again, we're going to be severely overweight. Stimulant module. Yeah, Barrett Magazine. <laughs> uh, M320 GLM, another launcher. Never heard of some of these things. Launcher module, functional functionality of large launchers in a very small package at the cost of decreased accuracy. It can be either attached to a rifle or combined with a buttstock for standalone use. All right. Uh, that's another one of those RivTech guns. Fires those silly 5x50 millimeter armor piercing. This one though, I'm not going to bother to pick up. I'll never use this tiny thing. Alright, I think it's just uh, grab the Barrett. Oh, we're just over, <laughs> even with our rucksack. Um, eh, leave the MREs. Never actually gonna open those things. All right, now I gotta figure out how to get all this stuff out of here from where I'm at. Um, <laughs> huh. So north wall, I think centrally located. All right, get back up here. Drop. All right, I'm below weight. About there, you same amount of volume. Where is my ladder out of here? Or my stairs out of here? This way? Really? I missed somebody? Hmm. Interesting. I 
Ah, there we go. So there's my indicator. So it's down and to the right of here. Alright, so follow my stairs and keep going to the north wall. That should get me home. Alright, I think we can get everything else in one trip, and at least now I know where to go. Or at least have a pretty good idea. Got everything just under weight and plenty of volume. We are out. We have successfully, I believe, cleared the full lab. We had that one stairs down that had the long drop that I'm not willing to go chance. Otherwise, we got it all cleared. And that was just going to take me to the same level that I was on where I found the science ID card at the bottom. So there was another section somewhere down there, but uh, I don't think it's worth the danger. All right, there's our final pile. Let's take a look at it. Barrett, the Arbiter, auto guns. Yeah, I did bring up two of those. So all sorts of Riv Tech pistols, assault rifles, uh, grenade launchers, battle rifles, an extra magazine for the Barrett sniper rifle, um, extra stick magazines for the 8x40 millimeter guns that most of these Riv Tech weapons are. 160 rounds of the 8x40 caseless to load those guns with, as well as some FMJ and some tracer rounds, so that's pretty awesome. Uh, BFG shells, some really weird 5x50 ammo, which goes into a few of those guns. So we've got some really good armor-piercing guns if I ever decide to whip a gun out. Um, I just haven't had an opportunity or need to yet. Although, again, if I faced the Shoggoth again, and I had one of these battle rifles with a flechette gun, I'm pretty sure it would die. Because I would just go into Matrix mode, step up next to it, point-blank range, full aim, and just full burst, full burst, full burst, and I'm fairly sure it would easily fall over before uh, the Matrix power would end up, would end. So that's all great. Cash cards, couldn't care less two more teleporters to go into the back. Uh, ankle pouch, helmets, don't care. More first aid kits. Stimulant modules, some mods. Alright, bionics. Arms alloy is good, but if I remember right, the percentage chances of failure of some of these were pretty high. Um, but we'll see. Two Mark II storage, so that's 500 right there, and another 9, so that's 1400 energy, and I know I've got more than 20 in storage, so that's 3400, 44, 5400. I might be pushing 6000 power by the time I get done. Um, and then the time dilation, and we're just praying I can get that time dilation successfully installed. And then mutagens, we got two purifiers and a purifier serum, so can't complain. We got some really cool stuff out of here. 
I thought I would get more of this kind of thing. Getting a single mutagen out of an entire lab just seems kind of off to me. But, uh, one military card, one science card, seven gallons of ammonia, three more bleach, which I already have a lot of, 2,500 batteries, ceramic, five more plutonium, UPS conversion mod I'm pretty happy about, and then some stuff, some other armor. All in all, pretty good haul, but I need to do some uh, inventory maintenance because this is how much stuff? 146 liters just in the pile we brought out, and I've got. Yeah, about 100 right there. I could smash it in various places to make it fit, but uh, things are getting pretty tight in the vehicle. I'm going to have to, at some point, do some general inventory management and get this thing trimmed down a bit. Get rid of all this extraneous crap that I'm packing around. For the moment, though, let's go ahead and get something to eat and drink. Alright, full and slaked. Let's take an aspirin. Get that pain coming down. Tiny bit of irradiation, don't care. It is... 11.30? I think I'm just going to sleep until the light comes up. That'll give me, what, about seven hours of sleep? Eh, let's go ahead and turn the dampers on. Sleep as long as he wants or until something comes banging on the vehicle. Your body's natural defenses surpass the effects of the antibodies. Okay. <laughs> Well rested, awareness comes fast, your body coming quickly to attention after your rest. I think that is a benefit of the uh, leukocyte chamber, or leukocyte breeder system, improving my uh, natural immunity systems, keeping my health up. Oops, I had the interchange on that whole time. Holy crap, I'm surprised I didn't starve to death. <laughs> that was a bad idea. That was a really bad idea. Alright, only thing on is my leukocyte, which is normal. Everything else is turned off. Top off our hydration. We're full and slaked. No negative effects. We're happy. Z's weak one warrior. Perfect conditions. Gotta drop that rucksack. And we should be back to our fighting trim. Temperature's good, torso's a little bit much on the encumbrance, but uh, we're hitting often enough that I'm not in too much danger from even the heavy stuff right now. And the added t uh, torso protection, I think, is worth it, so... Alright, um, I think... Look through chat here, catching up with you guys. Alright, so the high thirst, very thirsty, was a bad effect. It made the hydration more of a problem. So that's the first that I remember of a negative effect from our genetic chaos. But uh, the other benefits have been well worth it. So uh, water is not that hard to get a hold of, so I'm not too worried. <laughs> that's true, Tom. For a drunk, it is an upgrade because that just means I can uh, keep drinking more often as the slake status disappears. Okay, uh, I also need to remember to take off my rollerblades and wear my survivor boots. So we got that taken care of. 
Yeah, rollerblades are awesome in the right environments. For some reason, the rollerblades don't work in the PRM labs. The flooring in there doesn't count for whatever reason as hard flooring. I suspect that's a coding issue with the way those labs were built uh, for PKs, because they really should be hard floor and allow rollerblades to work in there. Uh, but the one I tested and tried it in, I wasn't getting any benefit from the rollerblades. It was giving me the negative effect for uh, uneven footing. Um, take a look here. We finished the lab.